I'm Dan Golding, I'm a beekeeper, along with my brother uh, Richard. We run a little family enterprise uh, called Essex Bees. Our aim is to put 200 colonies of bees in the South End or South East Essex area, in people's gardens, spread the word, spread the love, basically, and get more people interested in beekeeping. So that's what we do. The hardest bit of beekeeping is getting this started and then keeping it burning. What does the smoker do? Right, what the smoke does, it's very important, these are, they're dried grass pellets, um, and what we do, we, we set them on light, set them on light. Now the hardest thing about being a beekeeper, um, absolutely everything, the hardest thing, but if you can get your smoker alight, and keep it alight, then you've done the hardest part. So I cheat, I use a blowtorch, so, <laughs> so bear with me. We'll take a couple of minutes to get this going. Yeah, there's two theories, one theory is that the um, smoke reminds bees of forest fires from long ago but the one I believe in is it masks the smell of the pheromones, the scents within the hive and it just calms them down. If the forest is on fire the bees don't know whether they've got to run away or stay where they are and so smoke is, is an indication of fire so what, in the beehive we, we simulate a forest fire. So the first thing you do is you let them know you're here. So you give them a puff of smoke. The smoke goes in and the bees will sit there and go uh oh is it a big fire or is it a small fire? If it's a big fire, I you know, have too much smoke, or I smoke the bees for too long, they actually will fly away because they think the house is burning. So if I'm fairly quick, which I normally tend to be, the bees will know that actually the fire was there, but the danger's gone away. Um, and so they'll stay where they are. But during that moment of indecision, where the bees are thinking, well, shall we go, shan't we go, they're very calm. And that's what the smoke does. It literally just tricks them to thinking the forest is on fire. And then that way, they, they behave themselves most of the time. I mean, it does smell, but it's actually a cold smoke, so we don't cook the bees. So if you don't mind getting this, and you will smell a smoke, so but if you put your hand in front of it, it's actually a cold smoke. And then you just have to make sure it carries on going. It goes all the way around, and now inside, you can't see it, I've got a little piece of Velcro, but make sure they can't even get up there. If you don't get this gap closed, they will find it. Because when they go for the stinging, the bees tend to go for your ankles, which is why you wear wellies or walking boots, or they go for the face. Bees inside your hat is not fun. It happens to all of us, but it's not fun. That's why you want this thing to hang down, and because I've torn this slightly, it's just why it's patched up with a bit of sticky tape. So, um, and because your hands are the bit that actually are most in contact with the bees is why you wear the gloves. They're too thick, you can't really feel what you're doing. But they can even sting through this. I do get stung through the hand occasionally. But if you get stung, it's normally because the beekeeper's actually not been sensitive enough to what he's doing. The other thing we need, we've got the smoker, which calms the bees down. And we have the hive tool. It's basically, um, the same piece of metal, very, very strong piece of metal. Yeah. And that allows me to sort of lift the top off, and it's sticky inside the hive. And the bees don't like any gaps, so you can see where the, the hives are all stacked together. Those will get this really, really small gaps in there, and the bees will fill it up with tree gum, which is called propolis. Everything's stuck together with what's called propolis. The propolis is like a glue they make from tree sap. And this year's been a big year for propolis, so everything's stuck together. All this sticky stuff on it, is it honey where you've lifted it up? No, that's propolis, which is the sticky stuff that the bees use to um, glue the hive together. They don't like grass and things. We can start. Play dressing up in the suit and have your photograph taken wearing the bee suit with the smoker going. Oh, it's <laughs> Right, sit your arm through. We've basically got so far, it's Over a set of the camera. Real beekeeper. <laughs> Head up. Put it back. All the way up. <laughs> camera. <laughs> Come with me then. <laughs> there you go. Okay? <laughs> Penguin. <laughs>
This is the stuff I harvested from the hives last month. The honey's been spun out, but they're still sticky and slippery, that's why I dropped it. Um, we put these back. The bees have actually created, drawn all the comb out. Uh, this has still got loads of honey in it, and they will actually put that and save that for the winter. We only put the honey that came from a hive back onto the same hive, so there's no problem of disease transference. Um, and they're all marked up and numbered, so we haven't got a problem. Now this is one I emptied last time, the frames are there, so they haven't actually had a lot of time to draw these out. So what we have, that's an empty frame. We put a foundation on with the hexagonal shapes and they extrude the wax. So these are empty and then when they extrude it, they start drawing the comb out like that, perfect hexagons. This brown mottled stuff is pollen. So there's even more there, so hopefully the camera can pick it up. So they've made a start. This is where they've extruded it almost all the way. And as you can see the shiny stuff, that's actually nectar. That's, co that's come straight from the plant. They bring it back and it's about 80% water. They evaporate the water out of the nectar by Warm, keeping it warm and beating their wings and when the percentage of water goes down to about 18% they then cap it so that's actually capped honey and that's honey that they're trying and on the reverse that's all been done now if we were to spin this honey out and save it the honey um, it's because of the water content it would ferment honey stays you can eat honey for donkey's years after you've actually harvested it if there's no water in it. But it's called hygroscopic, I think, and um, it absorbs water. So if you leave the lid off of the honey jar, the water is absorbed into the honey and it, it raises above 18% and it can ferment. So we won't harvest that one because there's, there's too much uncapped wax, uh, uncapped honey on it. This is all honey. So you've got two sides. There's about two pounds of honey in that frame. So that's two pounds. And I put it down there, just out of the way at the moment. And likewise, this one, half done. So I'm gonna leave that behind as well. And the frame that I took out, I've got to replace. So I'll take one from here. came off of these hives so there's no problem with potential diseases. Some people don't bother but we do. These things can weigh 30 pounds, that's where your back goes in the end. Right. And again you can see where last time I was here I took out some old honey, put it in there. We always take one frame out and put it on the floor because as you pull the frames up, when the frames are full, they rub against each other and you can actually squish all the bees. So that's why we always take one out. But again, there's a lot of pollen in there and honey. The brown stuff is the pollen. Right, this is the honey and it, because it's all got cuddled up, it's all dripping out, so we have to be careful. Now, unfortunately, the only way of getting rid of these bees is to do this. You shake them off. Because most of those bees have never been outdoors yet, they're, they're very confused. And again, that's all honey shake them off. The remaining ones are going to get brushed off in a minute. The 
that's all honey as well. Despite what I'm doing, they're still relatively calm and they're working around their jobs. And you can see around there, they're trying to repair the damage that's just happened as I pulled the wax away. So these are actually very calm bees. Some bees are quite vicious and they'll sting you as soon as look at you. You work as quickly, as smoothly and as calmly as you can so that you're interfering as little as possible. checking for is that there's no it's all honey and it's all caps and there's no brood in there which is the baby bees so what I'm gonna do the ones I've left behind because they're not fully done I'm gonna move to the middle move the spare frames I'm moving the frames that we've harvested and putting them into this tray so that they're for just transport, ease of transport really, and the bins to put over so that the bees can't smell it and flock it. I don't want to get stung. Afterwards we'll take it back home, cut the cappings off so that it's all honey so it'd be like that mm -hmm. um, and then we'll put it into the spinner and spin the honey out of the frames and then bottle it above the stand you have a board a base board with an entrance in the summer it's quite a wide entrance so the bees can get in and out in the winter we put a different one on with a narrower opening and that actually stops the wind makes them easier to guard it and keeps the temperature correct the box above the, ba the base board is slightly larger. It's called a national brood box. It's the standard box that British beekeepers use. And within that, you then have 11 frames where they draw the honey. On the hive, there, there's two sorts of boxes. You've got the bottom box, which is larger, which is known as a brood box. And that's where the bees live. That's their bedroom, their house. Above that, you've got what are called supers. And that's where the bees put the honey. Because a honeybee is very clever, but it's very stupid. In that it doesn't know when to stop working it will go around and produce honey over and over and over again it just doesn't know when to stop whereas a bumblebee um, or even a wasp if you like will only collect the food that it needs to live honeybees don't know when to stop and so what we do when the bottom box is full we put the first top box on the first super when that one's full up we put another one on top and then another one and another one so the two hives over there one's got three supers on and the other one's got one super on. I've put a super, which is a slightly smaller box on top, which increases the living space by 50%, which allows them to sort of expand more readily. Also stops from swarming as much. Um, and then after that, we put more of the supers on top, which is where we get the honey from. Now each super will have about 25 jars of honey in there for us, which is really cool. So we, we, we know how much honey's in there. This system's a brood and a half. Sometimes you can harvest honey from it, sometimes you can't. This is all honey. It's very calm bees, as you can see. They're not trying to sting anybody at the moment. So we can harvest this one. Time on fashion. So you can harvest honey out of the, soup, uh, the living super, the half bit of the brood and a half, um, which is what we do. But we always put the wet frames back. And although it's only the end of August, and some people do try and harvest the September crop of ivy and the last of the flowers, we leave that for the bees, uh, because to be perfectly honest, honey's better for them to overwinter than the sugar solution that you put on instead. We will add su sugar solution, um, just to, so there's about 60 pounds of food in there for them to overwinter. But sugar water's a bit like living on fast food. You can do it, but it doesn't do you any good. Whereas the honey's got lots of micronutrients. Um, so we'll be back in about four weeks, put the wet frames on, 
Then we start adding the um, antiviral treatment, which is a medication, thymol based. Then we start filling it up for the uh, with sugar solution if they need it. And from sort of November through to February, we don't do much at all. They just hopefully survive. And what I'm going to do, I'll bring the bees over to you anyway, but we'll take some of the supers off and you can stick your finger in the wax and taste the honey as fresh as it can be, straight off the hive. We can't harvest this one because this outer arc is honey and this darker coloured is brood. This is baby bees. And you may not, there's a larvae in there as well. So what happens, the queen lays an egg, which is like a small grain of rice.